So good afternoon, Don. Uh, thanks so much for um, joining us on our business business owner spotlight. Um, really excited to hear what you have to say today. But do you want to just start off with uh, introducing yourself to everybody? Um, let us know a bit about your business. Uh, hi, Scott. Uh, thanks, yeah, for um, making contact with me and um, giving me an opportunity to have a conversation with you. Uh, yeah, my business, well, <clears throat> I've been involved in uh, many businesses over the last 40 years. I've kind of been, been self-employed for 41 years now. And um, I started off as, a, <clears throat> as an apprentice plumber in my father's plumbing business. And, um, and then that sort of migrated into being a construction, use the word construction, but it's really a small building, jobbing building contractor. And then through one thing and another, we got involved in development, development of houses. And then that led on to, we then started developing nursing homes. Four other people at the time, Sandown Group and Crestacar, who no longer exist. And um, it's like neither Sandown nor Crestacar exist. And uh, we started developing for both those companies. And um, then we started uh, our own nursing home company, which is called Better Care. Uh, ran that for about 12 years and then sold it out. And then um, retired for a couple of years and then went back into business again. Uh, I was, at the time, I was conflicted out of the, the elderly care sector for five years. So went back into the opposite end of the spectrum into the looked after children's sector and built up a company called Keys Childcare and sold that out there about five, six years ago to a French uh, private equity company and then retired again for what I believed was the second and last time, but that only lasted a year. And then uh, I went back in again, largely driven by the fact that my children needed a job and I wasn't sure if at that stage we were going to get employment or not. <laughs> Fantastic. So you've um, you've retired more 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 times than most people then, let's put it like that. More comebacks in Frank Sinatra. <laughs> right, good. Um, and and so what about what about what you're doing just a minute then? Well when I retired for the second time, uh, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I was going to go and travel the world, but I'd largely already done that. And um, I realized that I still enjoyed business. And I actually, I'd, I'd, I'd built a new house up in the North Coast and had sort of decided I might retire there. But I found while it was a beautiful place and all the rest of it, walking the beach every day with a dog just didn't, it didn't really, it wasn't, I had enough money to retire on. Um, but I just thought like, if I was lucky enough to have another 30 years beyond that or 25 years, I just couldn't face that every day. Yeah, it wasn't but I said, it, you know, plus my children were getting older. They were coming yeah. up to that age. You know, um, my my eldest, she had went off on a gap year, which turned into a three year gap year. <laughs> and then she came back and my son, then he was at university and he was coming out of university. And my youngest, she was still at boarding school. But that's just a thought, right? Well, I go back in. It was really to back. I really go back in and start up for them as as much yeah. as anything else. In fact, that was the main driver. And and what? So what? What is the business then that you have? The minute? business we have now. We've got. Um, I decided. Well, uh, stick to knitting. If you're going to go back in, stick to what you know. Yeah. So back into house building because that's okay. what I started off at forty years prior to that. There, uh, or construction oriented. Sure. Um, fields, right? Yeah. Um, well, didn't, didn't go back into M and E, just went back into construction. So, I've been fortunate enough that through the proceeds of the sales of my business, I was able to amass a very large land bank, yeah. um, largely bought from Nama and Cerberus, who were, you know, one was a, a reconstruction bank to pick up all the assets that had been that were washed away in the flood of two hundred five, and also from Cerberus here in America what I call vulture fund, capital fund, yeah. you know, they pick up distressed assets, et cetera, et cetera. So I bought a lot of sites off them with my brother and we went back into house building and it's a company called Mayfair Homes. Okay. Uh, um, who, I was going to ask what, what I was going to ask. So, so you're, so you're back into construction then. And um, what about, what, what, what sort of impact has, has COVID had on the, on that business with you then? And what have you had to put in place to? Oh, geez, where do you start with that, Scott? Look, to be honest yeah. with you, I said, it's not actually, constru we have a construction arm, which is Mazarin Developments, and we also have a, 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 a house building arm, which is Mayfair Homes. Sure. Um, Mayfair Homes 
we own the sites and we largely put those out to builders to build for us on our behalf. We have a direct labor squad, which is Madrine Developments, and we use that for the more high-end stuff that we use. So we can totally control the, the quality of the finish for houses you're selling up to a million pounds. So the COVID thing, well, COVID hit. And at the time we had about four sites open and you, you had no choice, you had to close. Yeah. So the sites were closed down for about four or five months. And then they allowed um, social distancing construction to take place as best it could. Yeah. So we went back in again. Um, we, we started construction, started off slow. This applied right across the industry, the developed world, I believe. And um, it started off slow. It was difficult. I, you know, you had to, obviously, you were responsible as, a, as the person who owned the site. You're responsible as a developer, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Responsible as a, as a contractor as well. So the, the, the COVID thing, the biggest thing for me was, then things started picking up. It was almost nearly post-COVID that the problems had because what we found was that with the government pumping the huge amounts of money into the economy, that people, all that money was sitting in people's balance sheets, bank accounts, and when they opened up again, um, they wanted to spend that money on holidays and houses. And we, the exact opposite happened to what I thought was going to happen. I also had a healthcare division. Okay. Um, I thought my healthcare division was going to boom and as a result of the COVID, and I thought the house building was going to crater. Yeah. And complete opposite happened to what I, what I envisaged. The, how, the, the health business, because of the nature of it, the people I own, Lucas Love as well, which is a, a recruitment business for healthcare, I own doctor surgeries in the South, a company called YMS, and um, your medical services. And they tanked to the point where I had to step in, put money into them, pay people off. The house building took off like an express train. We opened right. up and demand was like nothing I've ever seen in my life. We couldn't cope, we couldn't cope with the demand. Prices went up. But then that led to the point where then the materials went up. Yeah. And the, the, the labor went up and we couldn't get it. So it's been a bit of a double-edged sword. Although we've been getting more money for the for the houses, we've been getting sure. the cost to construct them has been has been larger. So it's been pretty frenetic and chaotic. Now, I'm hoping that over the next 68 months, when with the, the, the right with inflation re rises and the rise in interest rates, I believe it's going to cause a bit of a. I'm going to put it, I don't know if, I mean, the, the recession we had in 2005, 2008 was, it was a mother of all recessions for yeah. my lifetime. Uh, it was it was more like a version of our 30s, where it was what we what, what you call in the parlance a, a balance sheet recession. Yeah. Where the balance sheet of, of the major lending institutions in the Western world were seriously impaired, yeah. and the governments like the 30s had to step in, you know, to the point where the government, where the South of Ireland nearly had to be bailed out by the, the by the European Union. Yeah. Uh, the Bank of England had to bail out Royal Bank of Scotland. Stone and Rock went to the wall. All the financial institutions. I mean, you get a balance sheet recession like that, people don't lend. I mean, there's no credit business, yeah. and it goes on for a long period of time. And there's a lot of restructuring goes on. If we have a recession now, it's going to be your common or garden recession. Yeah. One that's caused by well, the central banks of the world. It's a bit like taking a punch bowl away when a party gets started. Okay. Right? So that's what they're doing now. They're putting the interest rates up. They're taking the punch bowl away. And the party is going to stop. Yeah. You know? And the Federal Reserve, I think, now haven't made a, haven't made a mess of the inflationary thing. The Senate was transitory. Um, but, you know, if you look at the amount of dollars in circulation, and dollars the world reserve currency. Yeah, yeah. US dollar, there's 42% more dollars in circulation than there was pre COVID. Now, that is unprecedented in monetary history. You can look it up, and you can Federal Reserve website, M2, M, M, M3 money growth. Now, that money has to go somewhere. And initially, it went into the stock market. And the stock yeah. market became to where it's now probably, in some measures, the biggest bubble of all time. Big in 1929, big in 2000. And the money fed its way in there. It also fed its way into housing, property, and assets. And we're now, they're now basically having to put the fire out and they're yeah. doing the interest rates. So I think the Federal Reserve, in, in an effort to get their reputation back, they will kill this. Yeah. How much they overstep that, I don't know. We're already noticing a slowdown in demand for houses. And it's not that the demand is going away, the demand is there. People still want homes. There's a lot new houses, people want a new house. It's far easier to. It's far cheaper to run, far easier to heat, run, yeah. etc. Et Plus, it's their own house. Um, so the demand for housing isn't going away anywhere in the developed world. They haven't built enough for the last 25 years. Uh, but when the cost of money goes up, then the cost of buying that house or any asset goes up. On, on yeah. 
that. And I think they will snuff that. They will do their best to snuff that out and try and bring it back to normal. Yeah, so it's so going like, to be a bit more of a more of a correction um, yes. than, than so anything. I think this will be a correction as opposed to the the the, the downturn we had. Because if you look at it, all about all, all the major banks, the balance sheets are in um, in, in root health. And that's yeah. not because by the same thing, I mean, after the 30s downturn, the thing called the Smoot Holly Act that um, the, the then Fisher, the then Federal Reserve guy brought in, we and I have Method 2, uh, Sarbanes Oxley, it's all the same thing. It's making them hold more money in their, uh, their cash balances and banks are not lending. I mean, no. you're okay if you're a PLC and you're well, you're well capitalized, you can get money. If you're an SME, it's nigh on impossible to, money, yeah. to, to, to borrow money. So I think you're going to see a slowdown, but it's going to be your Conor Garden recession. Yeah. It may not even be that bad of a, a, a unemployment recession. Yeah. You know, 205, 208 was pretty rough in that respect. And it w- wiped a lot of people, especially in Northern Ireland, which is very property centric. Yes. Most of not a lot of people here tried to make money on the back of the property bandwagon, and in the south of Ireland, the same. Yeah. Um, we know we don't have it, we don't really have it, the, the same established business situation that you have in the UK, et cetera, et cetera. You know, we used to, you know, I mean, it used to be, um, you know, we had large in, industries here, we just don't have them now. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people try to get on the, on the back of wealth. I don't know if you realize it, but Northern Ireland actually in 205 experienced the highest. Uh, property brim it's ever experienced in history yeah of course we're yeah. still 25 percent below the peak yeah. in 205 yeah. uk is way above there's 30 percent above but they didn't get the highs that we got yeah so yeah, that was far too high 215 was far too low we're now back to probably where it should be and even now it's a little bit toppy you yeah. know in reality if you look at the long-term graph anytime property goes above six times six seven times the average wage it has to correct so, so that's all really interesting. I'm, I'm enjoying listening to what you're saying there, but I get the impression that you're really well versed in what's happening on a macro level, and then that helps you make better decisions at a micro level. Is that is that fair to say? Gee, Scott, you know, you, 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 you've summed it up in one sentence. You know, that, that's basically it. I mean, I have a, I'm a bit of a student of the macro level, largely because I find it interesting. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing as I say to my kids. If you find something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Uh, if you can earn money from it. Yeah. Um, I've always had an interest in the macro level, so much so that I was fortunate enough to call the downturn in 205 okay. and managed to sell most of what I had, liquidate yeah. most of what I had prior to the downturn, which is what enabled me to get such a land bank for houses yeah. in the way out again. Fantastic. Um, and, so, I mean, it's great. Yeah, I was, going, I, was, I was just going to ask, so what, what would you say has been across your career then what's been your biggest learning um since you've been a business owner oh be a healthy skeptic don't believe everything you're told yeah you know yeah. really i suppose um uh you know i suppose with regards to to all sides of business it's you know it's, again as i said to you earlier i just want to tell my kids if you if you find something you love yeah you know and you, and you make can make money out of it, you know, you'll never work a day in your life. You'll enjoy yeah. it, you know, and I suppose it's like, and it's perseverance too, you know, it's, it's hard work. And, um, you know, they always say that perseverance is genius in disguise, you know, and um, and mistakes too, you know, because mistakes are mistakes are the portals to discovery. Yes. You, know, you make mistakes as long as you don't put your lights out. Yeah. You know, it can be a wee bit of the game of, the game of snakes and ladders, you know. Yeah, feel bad. So make the mistakes and learn from them, and, and, and learn from them. Yeah, I think you know from that point of view, it's where I, it's you know, I see in science, right? In science, progress is cumulative, right? Okay. But in finance, it's cyclical. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and yeah. That's that's what I've always tried to see. It's being on the right side of the curve. Look, yeah. Recessions happen. Yeah. Every twenty years, there's a, there's a property downturn because of the nature of the way our finance industry is set up. Yeah. You know, and when people have a crisis, it's a credit crisis. It's yeah. usually the cost of credit or the availability of credit that causes crisis to happen. So it's around having the courage of your convictions to make an educated decision and and, and run with it, then yeah. to, to take advantage of a situation like you did in 2005. And not being too overexposed. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not against debt. No. Debt, debt, Again, I'm keep finding all these sayings that you, but debt can be intoxicating in the way up. Yeah. Toxic in the way down. Yeah. 
And if you're if you're over leveraged when you get a downturn, you can be dialed up. You know, yeah. that can be that can put, that, that can be the sure fire where to put your lights out, you know. And um, so as I've grown along the way, my first business I brought in, I had no choice, it was very capital intensive. I had to bring in a venture capitalist company called 3i, which is right. an investors in industry, which yeah. is no post-war institution set up by the the, the, the government strong armed the banks and forming a UK based VC and they were they I think they might still be they're not they're, they're the Americans are huge ones like BlackRock and all yes. the servers I mentioned before venture capitalists private equity companies but um, I brought them into my first business and I needed to because it was I needed millions of pounds of capital investment I didn't have it and they took a share but they yeah. backed the business model at the time so. What, what what would you say has been the biggest challenge you've had to overcome across your across your career? Do you know what? There's, I mean, there's been many of them. Um, yeah. Challenges are just challenges are part of every day. Yeah. You, you have your day to day minutiae problems that everybody has. Sure. Uh, usually they're staff related. Yeah. You know, okay. and sometimes they're customer related. Okay. Um, and that's that, that's what everybody has. Yeah. The main problem, the main thing is to try and, as I said to you before, is avoiding those pitfalls and making sure that if you're if you can sense any downturn coming that you're not over leveraged. It's yeah. really like at the moment. If you're, I think you're going to see now what we've had as a result of the um, COVID, the pandemic, yeah. is the government stepped in, and government stepped in and became the lender of last resort. Yeah. And people were able to get C bills loans. I've got them myself. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. And they lent money out and they, they, they stood in behind the bank guaranteeing certain things. And those loans are at low value. So what they're doing at the moment is they're keeping some of the, what I would call zombie companies afloat. Okay, yeah. And if you get interest rates going up, because whether it's a C-Bills loan or whatever, that you still have to pay it back. Yeah. And you might see a bit of a, you might see a bit of a washout in the next 68 months of companies where the higher interest rates are basically exposing them. Yeah, and you might see that's where you might get a bit of unemployment coming. But you know what? That's just what Joseph Schumpeter, the, the famous you know, economist, says. It's just creative destruction. Um, yeah, that, that's what happens. So, um, as you say, you've put a few um, sayings in there. Um, I'm keen to know what do you have a favorite saying that you've picked up over the years that serves you well? Oh, boy. I suppose that one I was saying to you where, um, uh, let me just see. I've written a couple of them down for you. I think I remember that one. Yeah, I think I think that one was saying, you know, in science, progress is cumulative and finance it is cyclical. Yeah, that's really interesting. You know, I haven't heard that before. No, that's that's one I heard a long time ago, and it's just thought. Or another another one would be um, I was at a trade show in Germany about fifteen years ago, and um, I was telling this German finance guy all about uh, my business and the, the EBITDA, right? That's his earnings yeah. for tax depreciation yeah. optimization. And he said to me, Mr. Patterson, he says, um, let me give you a bit of advice. Um, big, tall, very, you know, sophisticated looking chap. And he said to me, um, uh, profit, profit is opinion and cash is fact. Okay. You yeah. want that really, that really struck with me. Yeah. So uh, that was probably the, yeah, somebody told me recently you only get to run out of money once. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's similar to the end, isn't it? That is true. Snakes and ladders, we get down to zero. Yeah. That's it. That is very, very hard to start from zero again. Yeah. So Don, is it, I'm, I'm keen to know then if if somebody came to you and they were uh, were thinking of going into business for themselves, what what piece of advice would you give them? Well, I would say, you know, if if you're if you have the enthusiasm. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Follow your dreams. There's most as many ways as like catching your wagon to a star, uh, and working for yourself is the best thing you've ever done. I've, I've never known anything else. I yeah. worked for my father when I left school at sixteen, and um, and really from then on, working for your parents is like working for yourself. I know it's yeah. from the business. So I've never worked for anybody else. Uh, um, a, f a few jobs. I took a few job uh, waitering jobs and things like that to you yeah. know, supplement my meager apprenticeship wages. But um, apart from that. No, so I would say absolutely. If anybody's, it's like everything else. It's really, a, it's a calling. It's a, it's yeah. within you. Um, not for everybody. Yeah, so it's not. It's not for absolutely. It can't be for everybody. You can't all be self-employed. No. But um, there's some people prefer, prefer being an employee, and you can be very successful employee, especially in, yeah. if, you, if you're if you're clever enough and you get into the, the 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 PLC sector and you work your way up through management, you can do very well through stock options and big salaries. 
yeah. And and just um, just lastly, then um, if you were if you were to start out again, uh, start your business career again, is there anything you would have done differently, maybe even when you were building that first company? Done differently. Do you know what? Not really. Yeah. Not really. I've enjoyed it all along the way. I mean, there's been hard times and good times, but it's been good fun. It's been good fun. I mean, there's there's something great about uh, you know, building a building a business is great fun. Yeah. As, as well, I mean, it's hard work, but it it, it, it can be great fun. As I, as I said, as someone who's retired twice and <laughs> came back not for money. Yeah. I came back to uh, because I enjoyed it. Does it all? It's hard to fill. I mean, it's hard to fill your day going around the golf course every day, or yeah. even going on, on on foreign holidays. I mean, after a month or so, I'm ready for home. Yeah, I suppose it's it's like anything, you know, getting the balance. You know, you don't want to have too much yeah. downtime, but then some people fall into the trap of too much uptime. You know, too much time devoted it's to their business. right for everybody else. I mean, yeah. you're seeing around the world now where a lot of people are reassessing their yeah. life work balance. You know, they're calling it the great retirement, the great this. And now I think this. Cost of living crisis might cause that the reverse. You're seeing work from home. Sure. I think what you what I think you're seeing is things that were in tra- sorry in motion, but yes. have been sped up by as much as a decade or fifteen years. Yeah, totally agree. You know, a very compressed period of time. Yeah, absolutely, totally agree with that. Well, business models to go up in the air. I mean, the business models have been turned upside down by yeah. the pandemic and by there's the a lot of disruption out there, isn't it? Oh, massively. Massively. Yeah. And as you yeah. say, it's, it's been accelerated. It's 10 years. What it would maybe what it's going to take the next 10 years with technology and whatever else, like Zoom yep. calls like this. Correct. Than Correct. Yeah, that's right. Very much so. Very much so. Don, listen, I uh, I really enjoyed that. Um, learned a lot <laughs> and I appreciate you uh, taking the time to speak to us. I know that um, everybody watches this is going to take something away from it and um, get some of your um, some of your wisdom you've built up over the last 40 years. And I can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing that with us. Scott, thank you very much. I actually quite enjoyed it. Good man. Thanks again, Bob. Thanks a million. Cheers, man.